to know that God is with you is enough to calm you because here it is God may allow you to go into the furnace but the truth of the matter is just to know that he can deliver you he has power to do that or to ease your troubled mind Welcome to Mount Zion, where you will have a mountaintop worship experience. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse number 8, simply reads as follows. And in the same region where there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. Hallelujah. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, hallelujah, and goodwill amongst those whom he is pleased with. This is the word of God for the people of God, that he may be glorified we might be lifted up and informed. Hallelujah. Father God, how we love you today. How we love you today. As always, our prayer is what we do not know, oh God, please teach us. Where we have not been, take us. And what we are not, please mold and make us. In thy son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 You may be seated in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. I guess I ought to give you a sermonic title and topic for today's presentation. Amen. 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 If you don't mind, brothers and sisters, we're just going to be real simple today. We're not going to get too deep because I don't think we can handle being too deep today. We'd be done to tow this church up. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. We'd be done to tow this church up. Now, if you tear it up, that's okay because we're just going to put some new stuff in here. So let's tear it. Well, we're not going to tear it up today. Amen. But if you don't mind, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. If you want peace, want peace. Be, still. be still. Amen. Amen. That'll preach right there. If you want peace, be still. Mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right now. Hallelujah. I just felt something run up my spine, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turmoil, interior, exterior, toxicity, interior, exterior, confusion, befuddlement, and just sometimes, sometimes just downright noise. I'm sure that no matter how 
old or young you are in this room, you can relate to those terms that I just gave. And when we look at the fact that we have to deal with on a daily basis, if not a weekly or a monthly or maybe yearly or seasonally, that we have these issues, I would beg and borrow that the majority of those of you who were in this place and those who are on the other line, on the other side of our phone line and our camera, would simply say that the answer to this, the, 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 the vaccination against this, would be peace. Somebody say, I need peace. I need peace. You may not need it today. But, but treat this sermon, this presentation, this word today, treat it like, like Big Mama treated preserves. You, 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 don't, you don't make preserves to eat them today. You, you make them today while the sun is shining because you know some cold days are coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here it is, brothers and sisters. We, when we look at this, this term peace, we would think that peace simply means that there is an absence of these particular issues that we deal with. But true peace doesn't show up until there's an issue. You, you can't recognize true peace until you have an issue that you have to deal with. You, ha have you ever been in a place where it's just so loud even though it's quiet? Yeah. Where it's so much noise e even though there's nobody there? You, you, you all alone by yourself at your own crib, driving down your own, uh, in your car down the street by yourself. No radio on or nothing, but it's so quiet or so loud that, that you, you, you're looking and saying to God, if I could just get some peace. <sighs> Maybe I'm by myself today. Sister Charlize, let me tell you, I, I, I've been there. I've been there, uh, even to the point to where, where the lack of peace causes you to, causes you to cry. You, you know, you know and, and I understand, I, I, I understand. See, Voltaire said that tears are the silent language of grief. <laughs> he, he, said, he said, when you ain't got nothing else to say, and it's so much weight on you, 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 you there's something about... This, this mechanism called the human body that God allows tears to come out. You, you know what that is. That's what we call a pressure release valve. Sometimes so much can build up on the inside of you that if you don't allow the pressure to be released, hallelujah, if the pressure is not really, you're going to snap or pop something or somebody. Peace, y'all. You, you know, we're in the Advent season. And those of you who are familiar with Advent, you realize and recognize that Advent simply means to look forward to the arrival of a special someone or something. We found that during the course of the Advent uh, that we celebrate as believers, that the arrival that we look forward to every year around this time is the arrival of Jesus the Christ in the form of a baby. Now, lest we get it twisted, we, we need to be reminded he didn't stay a baby. Because the baby didn't hang on that cross. Baby was not crucified for you and for me. But he came in the form of a baby. Now, this is what blows my wig back about Jesus coming in the form of a baby. The first thing, you know, we talk about his birth is a, a supernatural birth. And the truth of the matter is he didn't have a supernatural birth. I just messed, on, messed with somebody's theology right there. He didn't have a supernatural birth. Mary went through pains just like every other woman. The only thing that was supernatural about that particular time 
is usually 99.9999% of the time in order for a, a woman to get pregnant, the hymen of that woman is pierced from the outside going in. But with Mary, It was pierced from the inside. Lord have mercy. Oh, y'all act like y'all knew that already. But, but this, the birth was not so supernatural. What was supernatural was the conception. Holy Ghost. Man, that's what I love about this Bible. All throughout the Bible, you see the Holy Ghost showing up. <laughs> if you have an NIV or if you have an ESV, the Holy Spirit. But King James, he liked to throw a Holy Ghost. Throws in there. And, and, and you see how the Holy Spirit shows up in her conception or the conception of Jesus Christ. But then, brothers and sisters, he, he shows up in the life of Zacharias and Elizabeth. Matter of fact, the Bible says that John, their baby, was full of the Holy Ghost while he was still in his mama's womb. Oh, you ain't shouting about that. You know who don't shout about that? Folk who ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. But folk who are filled with the Holy Ghost... They shout about that. You know why? Because you remember when you wasn't. You, you remember what, what kind of joker you used to be. You, you, know, you, you remember what kind of thought you used to be. You, you, you remember. And so when you find out that somebody was filled with the Holy Ghost while they were in their mama womb, that shouts you right there. Because it was not until you were filled with the Holy Spirit that you recognized and realized who God really is. Yeah. See, our praise team was just singing a song, Our God is Awesome. Yeah. Some folk were sitting there like a bump on the log. You know why? Because he ain't your God. Either he ain't your God or you have a misconception of who he is. You think he's just like your friend who said, I'll be with you always until things got tight. You, you, thought, you, you, you think that God is just like, you know, family members that, that, that say that they'll be with you always. Yeah, they meant good. They meant well. But guess what? The number came up, and it was time for them to make exit from earth's sorrows and hopefully into heaven's glory. It'd be a doggone shame to leave earth's sorrows and go to hell. Right. Right. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Man, that's something. So the Holy Spirit hovers over this Mary. Jesus was conceived. Mary was his earthly mother. Y'all know the song. But God is his heavenly father. Why would God allow Jesus to come into this earthly story? There's a myriad of reasons, I mean, but the main reason is because he loves us. You, 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 know, you know, when you read the Gospels, I love this, and I'm, I'll be out of your way in a minute. I, I hope I'm not boring you. But, but when you read the Gospels, you, you find that one Gospel uh, deals with the genealogy, or should I say, with the, the, the historicity of Jesus <laughs> by, by, by talking about uh, how, in fact, that Jesus is in the lineage of Abraham. Yeah. Ooh, that's good, ain't it? Yeah. But, but then there's another gospel that talks about how Jesus is in the, in the lineage of, of Adam. Ooh, that's going way far back, isn't it? Yeah. Then there's another gospel that, that he doesn't even go that far. He, he doesn't go to Adam or to Abraham. 
he, he goes to the point in which he was uh, 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 he was baptized. Yeah. And, 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 you know, he, he talks about the baptism of Jesus. That's, that's as far as he goes. But then, man, I love how John rocks the boat, y'all. John, John goes before uh, the, the baptism. He goes before uh, uh, Abraham. He goes before Adam. He says, in the beginning <laughs> was the word. Now, he said, let me describe to you the word. The word was with God. So the word was looking God face to face. But the word was God. Lord have mercy. But here comes the problem. Sin enters into the world. There is no remedy for sin. So what does God do? God, the word says, prepare me a body. Because here it is. The problem is that there is a chasm between man and, and God. Between God and the one that he created. Out of love, y'all. There's a chasm, and the only way the chasm can be, can be filled, the only way the breach can be fixed is that there has to be the blood of an unspotted lamb. Sinless lamb. So, so here it is. God, God the, the word says, prepare me a body. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. Man, ain't that something? The word dwelt among us. What was in that, that, that word when he dwelt amongst us? Can you imagine what it must have been like? To see Jesus, walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus. I've heard people say, if I could walk with him, I would believe everything. No, you wouldn't. Because you got him right here. I'm sorry, you got him on your coffee table. Open up to Psalm number 23 with a, a four-leaf clover lay, laying on it. Got him in your car in the back window. Can I tell you what you got? Because, you know, sometimes you don't know what you got. You ever had some? I, I, I have a friend. I have a friend. Had a brand new Mercedes Benz S550. And, and, and all he knew how to do was get in and drive. He never opened up the manual. So he didn't know all of the. Y'all messing with me today. You acting like you, th th this ain't impressive. It's impressive to me. Let me preach to me today. He, he got in, and all he knew how to do was drive the car. Be he, he never experienced the accoutrements of the car. He, he never experienced. You know why? Because he was too lazy to open up the glove box and look in the book. Can I tell you what's in the word, y'all? Love is in the word. For God so loved the world that, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed, whosoever received the gift should not perish but have everlasting life. Now I'm telling you now that that right there is a heck of a picture to, to, to see. That if you receive the gift, you not only don't die, but you live. Oh man, you, you're not getting it. There's a difference between not dying and living. There's some folk hooked up to machines today. They ain't dead. Lord have mercy. There's some folks sitting in hospital rooms, in mental wards. They ain't dead. Okay, you ain't like that. There's some folks sitting on pews in churches this morning. Simply go through the routine of life. They ain't dead, but they ain't living. See, some folks shout off of that passage of scripture because they realize that that part of that scripture means that one day I'm going to go to heaven. But can I help you today? Jesus said, I came 
that you might have life and life more abundantly. In other words, you don't have to wait till you go to heaven in order to live. If you receive the grace gift of Jesus Christ, you can live today. Look at your neighbor and say, you can live today. today. I'm sorry, tell your neighbor, wake up. You can live today. But you got to open the book. Uh, love is in that book, y'all. Love is in that gift. Joy is in that gift. I, I know, I know, I know you don't need joy. <laughs> but, but, but for folk like me, that, that have to deal with me, that have to know what, 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 what I'm going through, look at yourself and say, self, you need some joy. And this is the shouting good part about joy, y'all. Joy is not relegated to scenario, situation, or surroundings. In other words, you can have joy even though your scenario, situation, and surroundings is jacked up. Because scenarios and situations and surroundings are all external. You know what I mean? When your money is funny and your change is strange, can I help you today? Sometimes you don't feel so happy. You, 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 you don't want to, you know, uh, uh, clap along with me. Okay, y'all. See, they so saved, they don't listen to no secular music. They don't know who, they don't know, they don't know what I'm talking about. You, you, you're not trying to, to, to raise the roof and you're not, no, no, you, you, you're feeling some kind because you ain't got no money in your pocket. Or you receive a pink slip. That's happiness, y'all. But joy is when you look at the jacked up around you, but you still on top of the world. Because of the God you serve. So there's joy, there, there, there's, there's happiness. Lord have mercy. Y you know, um, there, there's joy, there's love. Uh, and, and, and I want to deal with this today. There's this thing called peace. Look at what the book says, y'all. It says... That as you read beginning church chapter number two at the very beginning, it talks about how it was that our brother Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, found himself taking his wife from Galilee to the town, or should I say he, he took her to Bethlehem. Uh, from Nazareth to Beth Bethlehem. And he took her there because there was a census being taken. The Roman regime wanted to count all the folk, wanted to know who is hooked up to whom and how long and how long does the family go back and all that kind of stuff. And then it came down to, you, you know, when you want to know what's going on, what do they always tell you? Follow the money. <laughs> because here it is, they had to pay taxes. But it's amazing how God will use what seems to be a, a natural situation to intervene and make it become a supernatural. You, you, you thought that what happened to you was something to hurt you. But the God we serve, yeah. he takes what you thought was meant to hurt you and he uses it to bless you. You, you don't believe me? Ask my brother. Okay, y'all do know that this guy Joseph, more than likely he was named after Joseph. It's not the same Joseph in, in Luke 
as, as in the Old Testament. But, but what I love about Joseph of the Old Testament is that Joseph of the Old Testament was noted to be a dreamer. Y'all know that, right? But what I love about Joseph of the New Testament, he's also noted to be a dreamer. You, you, you do know that God told him what was finna happen. Somebody say finna happen. That, that your wife is going to be impregnated. He tells him all of this stuff. And, and, and the angel, as he tells him this, Joseph has to hold on to this. Because here it is. That's not necessarily a fun situation to be in. Being that you are betrothed to a woman, that means that you all are engaged. And so for one year, it was his job to go away and prepare a place for her. That where he is... She will be also. But here it is, brothers and sisters. That time of betrothal was also a time to show your love for the person in keeping yourself from all others. I saved myself for thee. And the people around knew this. Now, you got to realize now, it was probably not Joseph's uh, who chose Mary? They lived in a patriarchal society, and the parents chose her. And, and here it is, brothers and sisters. As that takes place, Joseph knows that if she comes up pregnant, oh, goodness, my Aunt Esther going to be tripping. She always counting up on folk. Y'all don't know what counting up is. And see, they got married in, let's see. They got married in December. That baby was born in November. Let me count. I know, listen, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. The folk did that to me and my wife. She got pregnant five weeks after we got married. And folk was <laughs> pulling out popsicle sticks and <laughs> drawing lines and crossing it. And that. I know they did. I know people. <laughs> I know y'all, since y'all looking funny. <laughs> but, but he knew what his folk was going to do. But so what he said, well, maybe I'll just put her away quietly. Because if I don't put her away quietly, what happens is, or what can happen, is they can stone her to death for slipping, dipping, and tipping. Can you imagine if that is how society was today? How many of us would be sitting in here? Man, he might as well crank the organ and drums up right there. Get your shout on, man. I'm just talking. Y'all don't mind me talking, do you? But here it is. He, 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 he does not put her away quietly. But it looks like Joseph goes ahead and just marries her. Because the Bible says he took his wife for the census. He trusted God in what looked to be an ordinary, jacked-up situation. Let me say it like this. God, God, God says, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to bless the whole world. And the way I'm going to do this is because of the chasm between me and, and humankind. I, I'll, send, I'll send my son takes a natural situation, gets Joseph to Bethlehem, which is a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy that that babe would be born in Bethlehem. And, and, and here it is. As he gets there, the baby is born, and we're going to deal with the rest of it some other time because y'all know this story. I'm sure you've seen the movie. <laughs> he says, it says in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock at night. Now, I'm going to use that because I want you to go home and do some 
some homework. When you look at that, you will find out that Jesus was not born in December. He was not born on December 25th. He was not because at that time of the year, even over in the east, y'all, yeah. guess what's going on? Snow. <laughs> There's snow. But here it is. We don't shout about when he was born. What we celebrate is that he was born. And if you don't get that, let me help you along. Because if he had not been born, he could not die on that tree. And if he had not died on that tree, Lord have mercy on my soul. So then, brothers and sisters, what I love about this picture, we see this picture, and I want to I share this with you as well before we get there. Uh, I, and I know I have Bible students in the house, but please realize that your nativity scene, your, your Christmas tree, your all of that stuff, please don't find, please don't think that that's something to worship. Hello. I'm saying this because there are some people who will tell you that it's wrong to have a tree because, you know, you worship in that tree and see those pagans would, would put different uh, things on the tree and, and, if, and, 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 and they would jump around the tree and then they would have a Yule log which was where we get the Yuletide carol and all that kind of stuff. And, and they would take these logs, these huge logs, and build giant fires, and they would jump around them. And that was a pagan. And so Christmas is a pagan holiday. And that Christmas wreath on your door, all that. Let, let, let me help y'all today. Y'all won't help today. We, we don't worship trees. We don't worship logs or none of that. You know what that stuff is? Pretty. Point setters, pretty. See, I, and I know what people say. Well, see, you got to understand, Pastor. Uh, I understand the story, and the story is that 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 Christmas is is not a pagan holiday. Christmas is an answer to a pagan holiday. Be, because here it is, th there was a time when the Catholic Church was trying to to get folks incorporated or excorporated. I should say, I just made that up. <laughs> Trying to get them to stop having these pagan holidays because these pagan holidays, which were the 20, or, or around, as a matter of fact, it wasn't even the 25th of December, but it was around the time where the sun was starting or daylight was beginning to get longer. You do realize that uh, from December on through the middle of the next year, the sunlight gets greater during the course of the day. They were celebrating that. And so here it is. The Pope at that particular time said, well, since we can't get them to stop celebrating the S-U-N, let's take the holiday and begin to celebrate the S-O-N. That's understand. And we're not doing it because the Pope said it. I, I know people will say, well, well, those wreaths, they meant something during that time, Pastor, so, so that's why we don't want to, we shouldn't put the wreaths up. If you choose not to do so, that's wonderful. If you choose not to have Christmas lights, that's wonderful. But please don't think that it's simply because of something that took place a long time ago and it means the same thing. Because I can tell you right now, a wreath on my door don't mean what a wreath meant to them. Okay, you're not happy with that. No, 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 don't clap on that. Clap on this. Here it is. How many of you all have swastikas Nobody. in your home? Nope. How many of y'all want some swastikas? Nah. We probably can get them off of, uh, Amazon. We can get them to, to you by Thursday. <laughs> Anybody want some swastikas? No, sir. Nobody wants them because of what you know it to mean. But do you know what the origin of the swastika is? The term or the, the swastika itself means the return of good times. Wow. So here it is. After World War I, Germany is jacked up. And so what, what Hitler thought he would do is return Germany to good times. 
So he takes the swastika and uses it as their symbol. Now, since I've said that, do you still want a swastika? <laughs> because of what it means right now. Yes, sir. I'm going to let you marinate on that for a second. I got you here now. You ain't going to show up next Sunday, so I got you here now. I'm going to Disneyland. All right. Okay. Send your tithes and offering back here. <laughs> Keep the lights on. But what I'm trying to get us to do is to be thinkers, y'all. Shepherds out, they saying, you know what, we're going to do our job. They're out watching over the sheep at night. I got another little something about that. Let me tell you something about that. The sheep that they were watching, because of the area they were in Bethlehem, the, the, the sheep that they were watching, they were just outside of Bethlehem. These were special sheep that were raised for sacrifice in the temple. This is where, this is where your, your unspotted lambs came from. Lord have mercy. Okay. I'll just move on because y'all looking at me like I'm just. So an angel comes to them and he says, listen, y'all. Glory, he says, uh, the Bible says that the glory of the Lord shone about them. And simply goes on, he says, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news, great tidings of great joy. That will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ. A Savior who is Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward me. Okay. Angel shows up tells the shepherds while you're standing here doing your job. I need you to understand that a gift has shown up that has been promised to you. The one that was promised of old, the one that was promised that would give you exactly what you needed. The government is going to be up on his show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. He, he's going to be the one to, that, that breaches or, or, or closes the chasm between God and man. Now, the shouting good news on that, brothers and sisters, is that when we think about peace, usually we think about peace in our own lives. But to understand true peace and have peace uh, uh, individually, you got to understand that, that corporately we all need peace. What do you mean, preacher? Because the absence of peace in our relationship with God means that we are enemies of God. You and I were born enemies of God. That is because we were born with a sin nature. And this angel says, let me help you today. You don't have to be an enemy with God because God has sent an opportunity for you to be in right relationship with him. But all you got to do, look at your neighbor and say, all you got to do is accept the gift. The gift of peace. Enemies with God. See, when you're an enemy with God, you, 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 you find yourself in a constant fight that you cannot win. You, you ever heard of an unwinnable fight? I, I, I don't know how many fight fans I have in here, but back in the, in the 80s and uh, in the 80s and early 90s, 
Whenever we heard somebody, I'll never forget when they told me Leon Spinks, I mean, uh, 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 Michael Spinks was going to fight Mike Tyson. Clash of the Titans. You know what I said? That for Mike Spinks is an unwinnable fight. When you are fighting and when you are an enemy of God, that's an unwinnable fight. Have you ever wondered why it is that you have tried to manage your life the way you want to manage it? You've done what you wanted to do. You've been, you know, done everything you were grown enough to do, and you still find yourself restless. It's not until you yield. Not until you yield. It's not until you pound the pavement three times and say, I give up. It's not until you say, God, I can't do it on my own. It's not, and this is what I love about God. He never said, you got to understand me. But what he said is, you got to trust me. I've given you enough in the word for you to look at what I've already done. To be able to trust me. Be able to know that I am God and like me there is none other. Be able to know, brothers and sisters, that I love and care for you more than you love and care for yourself. There's so many people this time of the year find themselves going up into a cocoon. Not want to bother with nobody. Don't, don't want to be around people because a loved one has passed away or something tragic has happened in your life. And so this time of the year, I don't want to be bothered with people. And you may feel that way, but you don't have to. Amen. Old folk knew what they was talking about. They say, see, the problem is, Reverend, <laughs> that folk talk about taking their burdens to the Lord. And they talk about leaving them there. But somebody knows today that every burden that's given to God ain't left with him. Here we are trying to do these things on our own. Not just old folk now. Young folk trying to battle with everything that you have to battle with in your life. You know, I wouldn't want to be a young person in school right now for nothing. Don't know if you're going to be able to go to school or if you got to stay home and look at somebody on a computer that don't know how to work the computer. Just yesterday, got word of a young lady in school and has had, since the school year began, has had three different math teachers and four principals. For that matter, I wouldn't want to be an educator right now either. But they got a raise. They ain't get enough raise. Battles all around us. Unease all around us. But thanks be to God. Huh. Thanks be to God that when we look at the story of Jesus the Christ, and by the way, y'all, when the wise men got there, and it wasn't three of them, well, they said gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That don't make it three of them. It could have been two of them, but more than likely it was many more. And look, this is what gets me. The, the three kings came bowing before him. Okay, I, I like the term wise men. You know why I like the term wise men? Because wise men always seek Jesus. All right, y'all. Let me see. The Lions must be playing today, so y'all. He said, yeah, go on preach, pastor. <laughs> Angel says, listen, y'all. If you want to see what I'm talking about. 
Oh, yeah. Wise men, when they got to him, he was two years old. Because when you read the scripture, it says they found the young child in the house. Manger and house is two different things. Just thought I'd say that. But, but, but he says the sign that what I'm telling you is the truth. If this ain't enough, we about to blow the, blow the roof off this place with this singing. Me and, and, man, can you imagine being an angel and heavenly host show up to be your backup singer? Lord have mercy. Okay. They, they, they began to sing, and the song was glory to God in the highest. Okay, that don't blow your wig back. I know it pre, it, 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 it's a predecessor to the scenario that I'm about to talk about. But remember, Jesus, when he was asked by his disciples, teach us to pray. You know, you remember what he said? He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God in the highest. Lord have mercy. If they giving glory to God in the heavenlies, Lord, we ought to have sense enough to give glory to you right here on the earthly realm. And this is what I love about it, y'all. They didn't wait till everything was perfect in their lives. Those shepherds understood that, yeah, every day I wake up, I'm going to have to go through the same routine, but I can go through this routine a little lighter because I know that peace has shown up. Lord have mercy. Listen to what he says. He says, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those who will be, uh, with whom he is pleased. Who is God pleased with? Because that's who the peace is for. <sighs> let, let me tell y'all a story about, not about a man named Jed. Let, let me tell y'all a story. There, there was a, a, a woman who had five kids. And, and the woman with the five kids was known for her baking abilities. She loved to make all kinds of baked goods, y'all. She made the sweet potato pies. Y'all don't know nothing about that. I know I got a pumpkin pie crowd in here. But she made sweet, <laughs> sweet potato pies. She made pound cakes, lemon cake, you name it, she did it. And, and, and on occasion, she would have her kids go out and do, you know, she gave them different chores to do. And they would go out and do them, and, 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 and une- inevitably, you always had one who didn't want to do his work. Y'all know anything about that? Yeah. Well, the other one said, we got to get it done, got to get it done. Always got me doing some work. I ain't no slave. You know. She, 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 she had them doing work. And, and here it is, y'all. She's making the cake. And as she's poured the batter into the pan, there's some batter left in the bowl. And, and there's some left. Listen, she left it on the spatula. She, she left some on the spoon because she recognized and realized that she had some kids that might enjoy this. But here it is, y'all. The kids didn't all get a spatula or a spoon or a bowl because the one who decided, I ain't no slave, all the time she's supposed to be out there or they're supposed to be out there raking leaves, Mama's looking through the window. When it came time to receive a spoon, a spatula, or a bowl, mom went down the line and handed out, got to that last one, and said, I'm sorry, I don't have nothing for you. I'm your child. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be here. It ain't my fault I'm here. Yeah, but it's your fault that you didn't, uh, you didn't receive the assignment in like manner as it was given. What am I trying to say, y'all? 
the word of God says that Jesus was given and the peace that he has was given to those whom God was pleased with. Who pleases God? The one who receives the gift. The one who does what he tells you to do. I don't understand how God is working this thing out in my life, but I trust him. And as I trust him, I obey him. And as I obey him, though the world is going crazy, I can still be cool because I've received the peace of God. Father, in the name that's above every name. On behalf of Pastor Kevin B. Mack and the Mount Zion Church family, we would like to say thank you for tuning in. We hope that you have been blessed by something you have seen or heard today. Please stay connected to us through all of our social platforms. You can find us on our website at www.mtzecourse.org. You could also search for us on Facebook by searching for Mount Zion eCourse. You could also connect with us on Instagram at mtzecourse. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this page.